best not to get not to get students in the film, okay. so that way I can put it on YouTube. Okay, so um, you know what? So you can hear me. You can stay six feet away. I'm going to take my mask off. So here are a bunch of filaments, and there's different types of filaments, and they have these little holes in here, and the whole reason for that is to keep the spool from getting tangled up, because if the spool gets tangled up, what's going to happen is when the filament is being pulled, it's going to not be able to pull anymore, and your your print is going to get it's going to fail. So when you take your spool out, when you take your filament out, make sure you put the filament into these little holes to keep from tangling. So far, so good. Okay, so. Got a whole bunch of filaments. I brought these from home. There's tons and tons of different colors. You can help yourself. One of the things you need to remember about PLA filament is it's a biofilament. It's a bioplastic. Basically, it comes from cornstarch. And because of that, you don't want to get it wet. Now, the good news is, or moist, and the good news is in the desert, it's probably going to be okay. But if you get like a, if you have a really humid, like couple of weeks, then it'll should be a problem. Don't think it's going to be a big deal. But here's all the colors. Now, brands, Hatchbox is the best you can buy, okay? If you're putting down, if you're having some trouble putting down plastic with one of the more exotic filaments, like this gold filament, it's probably because the filament's just not as good as the, the good stuff. So use the good stuff. Okay, so these are all heated up. What we need to do now is remove the filament that's already in there, okay? Um, come over, what was the name again? Ben. Ben? Yeah. Okay, so to heat something up, you come over to prepare. This is also on the poster. Hit prepare, and then down to preheat. Go to preheat, and then PLA. Okay, and that's going to set it to a target of 200 degrees on the hot end and 60 degrees on the bed. The hot end is what basically heats up and, pushes the, and allows the plastic to put, get pushed through. Okay, so, my, so while this is heating up, some important parts about the printer. This is the extruder motor, and there's a gear in the back that pushes the filament through with the extruder motor. And the software tells the motor how much to push through. This is the carriage that goes back and forth on a belt, and the belt is connected to a motor back here. This is the, this is the x-axis carriage and the x-axis belt. This is a belt tensioner, and I can tell right now that the belt is a little on the loose side, so when I tighten it up so it doesn't move more than about an eighth of an inch when you pull on it, okay? You want your belts nice and tight. Same thing here. I can tell this belt, this white belt, is a little on the loose side. So we're going to tighten it up a little bit. You want to keep your belts tight because they are what translate the motor's motion to the carriage's motion, okay? So if it's nice and tight, it'll be a perfect one-to-one. -one. Motor says move this far, this many millimeters, and the carriage will move that many millimeters. It won't fudge it a little bit. This is the bed, and we heat the bed so the plastic sticks very well to it. The bed is driven by a motor back here. This is the y-axis motor that brings it forward and backward. There's a giant screw in the back that controls the z-axis, and then there's a motor down below that controls the z-axis, and that brings the carriage up and down. So far, so good? Okay, so I'm going to give this a little bit more time. Uh, yeah, all right. So our spool is going to go up here, and you might notice the spool is moving back to the front, and that's because we're going to fill the spool filament through here. Okay, so now we're about 200 degrees on the hot end. So I can show you the hot end. I wish I could take a picture. With the hot end, you can actually see through the middle. It's basically a big metal box that heats up and keeps the filament nice and fluid. So the filament comes in as a solid, melts, and then get, gets pushed through a nozzle. Okay, so to remove old filament, you put your finger below the clamp down here and push down on the arm, and that's going to release the gear and then just pull up. Okay, so I'm going to get the rest of these heated up. So prepare, preheat, PLA. Prepare, preheat, PLA. Now there's other options on here that says ABS and, uh, and PETG. Those are different types of plastic that we do not use because they are a pain in the butt. And they're not all that better either. So prepare, preheat, PLA. Prepare, preheat, PLA. So now these all have a target of about 200 degrees Celsius on the nozzle. Again, that's twice the temperature it takes to boil water. So they get hot, they get, they're a hot end. And then 60 degrees on the bed. 
60 degrees in the bed is warm, not so hot that you can't touch it. Okay, so far so good? Okay, so let's go back to one of those knuckles back there. Now when it get, does get hot, sometimes the filament is going to start flowing out of the nozzle. That is totally normal. Okay, so far so good? Now, what we're going to do, this is the most important thing when you do a printer, is we're going to home the printer, then we're going to level the printer. So we're going to go back, back, and we're going to go prepare homing. And we're going to home all. Notice there's an X, there's an X, Y, and a Z axis. So again, there's an X, Y, and Z axis. We're going to home them all. And what the printer is going to do is it's going to move until it touches end stops. These are the end stop switches. They basically move, allow the carriage to move until it gets to a zero point. So right now, it's going to hit all the end stops and go to zero, zero, zero. Zero X, zero Y, and zero Z. And then we're going to level it. To level it, we get a piece of standard computer paper. When the printer is fully warmed, and we say back, and we're going to print a utility. Print. So notice we're at 260, which is where we should be. We're going to go to print, and we're going to go to utils, utilities, and we're going to print the Ender 3 bed level. And what this is going to do is it's going to move the nozzle to five places on the bed because we need to have the nozzle right above the bed. So, and what we're looking for is when a piece of paper just encounters friction. This paper is way too loose. So there's too much of a gap. Let's see if you can zoom in and see the gap under there. You can see the gap between the nozzle and the bed. Okay. There's too much of a gap there. Thank you. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to move the bed up to close that gap. These wheels, when you push them this direction away from the controls, it brings the bed up. When you push the wheels towards the controls, it brings the bed down. So what we're going to do is we're going to put a piece of paper and we're going to move it a little bit and move the wheel away from the control bed or the control center so just until we start feeling friction. Okay? When you start feeling friction, that means the nozzle is right where it should be. Okay, so now I'm starting to feel friction. So go ahead and then see how the nozzle is much closer to the bed. It looks like it's right on there. It's basically a tenth of a millimeter away. That's the thickness of the paper. So you hit continue, and it's going to go around again. So you notice these scratches. This happened because the nozzle was too close to the bed, and we scratched the bed up. Okay, now I can't get my paper out because the nozzle is basically pushing in on the bed. So I'm going to move my wheel towards the control until I just feel friction. Same thing here. So that's point two. I'm going to go to the high, this is the high X, high Y point. Put it down. I notice there's nothing at all. So I'm going to move the wheel away from the control. And that's going to bring the bed, allow the bed to come up until I have friction. Yep, now I have friction, a little too much friction. Back it up a little bit and I got just a tiny bit of friction. Next point. No friction at all. I'm going to move the wheel away from the controls. That's going to bring the bed up until I can start feeling friction. Now I've got some friction, a little too much friction. Back it up a little bit. I just have a tiny bit of friction and I'm good to go. Now it's going to go to the middle. And the middle tells you that your all four are good to go. Now I have no, I can't pull it at all. It's pushing down on the bed, which means one of these wheels is way off. So it's basically turned this way, or this way, or this way. So when that happens, I'm going to move all of the wheels down a little bit and continue. And we keep doing this. This is the key to a good print. We keep doing this until you can do a test and not see this grabbing again. So now I gotta bring the bed down. Because as you change one, so bring the bed down to move this way. As you change one, it does change the rest of them. And the key here is 
you level until you don't have to make any changes. When you've made a, when you've done a leveling run and you don't have to make any changes, you are ready to print. See, it's like stuck again. I'm going to move the wheel towards the controls until I get some friction. And this may require three leveling runs to get a good uh, a good test. Do it again. A little too much friction. I'm going to bring the bed up by moving it, or bring the bed down by moving it away. And good. Sorry, bring the bed. You bring the bed down by pushing it towards. Just right. Okay, so that leveling is done on my first run. Since I just made my did my first leveling run, I made a lot of changes, I'm gonna run it again before I do any printing. So far so good? Now I'm not gonna do that now because I'm gonna show you how to fill in the, the fill up the printer. So this is not leveled yet. I only did one level, I had to make a lot of changes. I'm gonna run it again. And again, to level you go print, utilities, check bed level. When you're pretty sure that's good to go, but you want to test it, there's an SQ bed level test that'll make a bunch of squares. And you can actually make fine adjustments while it's putting those squares down. Again, if you want the bed to move, oh, move down, then you move it towards the, the controls. If you want to move the bed up, you move it away from the controls. All right, so back to this one. I've, uh, I've got a hot, hot nozzle at 200 degrees. I push the, the arm down and pull the filament out. Okay. Ooh, this one's tricky because it's, there we go. So normally when the filament comes out, it's gonna look like this. There's a big blob at the end. Chop that blob off. I'm gonna show you how to load filament here in a second. Uh, someone hand me the, that white spool, red right into the gray. Okay, we're good to go, thank you. All right, so these are nippers, and normally they have a spring in there, there we go. So what we want to do is we want to take that is, do, is not what we want. We don't want it to be flat. What we want to do is give it a bevel. So we're going to pull it off like so. And you can load it like so. I'm going to move the carriage down and over. And you want to cut it so it makes like an arrowhead. It makes a nice bevel. That's going to make it easier to load. Now to load, you press the arm together and just put the filament in and you might encounter a little bit of resistance if it's not perfectly straight. If it is perfectly straight, it'll go in and you can start pushing it through and it'll start pushing the old filament out. When you change color, that's what you want. You want to get that old filament out of it, okay? So it had green, now it's white. It's probably, you know, kind of bright green right there. So you push the old filament out. So far so good? The very last thing you will have to do before you print is get yourself some alcohol and ideally a wipe or a tissue perfect wipe is good and realize these surfaces are really great for sticking the plastic but they do tend to get dust and oil especially in when there's a lot of people around here stuff falls out of your hair dust lint whatever you're just going to give it a light wipe of alcohol to get any dust or oil off of the bed okay once you've done those things, you should be ready to print. Now, when you print, this is important, I'm not, I don't have a print ready to go. When you print, you need to take a look and wait for the first two layers to go down. If you hear any grinding noises, you can turn it off by the switch back by the power cord. Okay. Also, because like you can see how these, this bed got etched because the nozzle was too close. If somebody would have paid attention and, and waited, that would have, they sort of seen that right away. You're like, there's no, there's no, plastic going down, it's etched, it's too close. So you look and you wait for your first two prints, or first two layers to go down before you walk away. Questions? All right, thank you, Ben. <laughs>